her uh, legs, and I thought I could. Welcome to Nevada. Thank you. And I thought I could, uh, you know, figure something out, wrap it around the golf cart. I don't know what I was going to do. Anyway, it was fortuitous. Not that he videoed everything today, which he did, and I videoed him. So I've got a lot of video of me swinging, uh, like the hacker I am. All right, Tim. I don't think we need to hear anything about you swinging today, mate. Hi. Hi, everybody. It's Ray. It's Life and Vibe. And uh, that was uh, Tim's last night evening chat. And as you can see, he was being very considerate of the vehicles around him as he uh, manipulated his tripod whilst driving because the cars were moving. So anyway, that's Tim. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to say thank you, everybody who is new to the channel. My name is Ray. I'm Life and Vibe. And today we're going to actually look at a video that Tim released a little bit earlier this morning um, where he is, I guess, using prosperity type thinking slash law of attraction to get closer to 100k subs and that uh coveted 100k plaque that he is so interested in receiving i'm not too sure but anyway just want to try to get out all of my fair use um items out here as you can see oh, the other way other way which way <laughs> i have my um in honor of tim there is obviously the opportunity to buy me a coffee instead of tim and i think all of you who have actually very generously donated to the coffee uh for this graduate student to get through her studies for the next year i am a licensed registered nurse here in the united states but the uh, main thing at the moment is i am a full-time student I am completing my master's in nursing with a focus on becoming a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. So with that said, this video still is only for education and entertainment purposes only. I am not treating or diagnosing anybody. I may speculate on occasion certain things to do with people's mental health as they present themselves in social media, but otherwise uh, I am not um, obviously at a place where I'm physically assessing anybody, so I'm not here as a um, treating type of provider at all. Obviously, I'm not even licensed to do that at this time. Um, I'm only in school trained to do so, but I only have about a year or so to go. So um, I appreciate the support. So let's just get over. Let's play out all my disclaimers about my fair use, you know, because we're going to look at Tim's uh, short video from this morning. He's put out a few, but this is one I found interesting. Obviously, you know, it's just for my opinion it's nothing more than that. It's uh, not anything beyond that, Tim. It's just my thoughts. <laughs> and then obviously, I really appreciate all the new subscribers. If you do like it, hit the subscribes. It's a really cheap, easy way of supporting this channel and letting YouTube know that you're enjoying the content. Anyway, I'm obviously at the gas pump because where else would I be <laughs> for 30 minutes? other than sitting in a gas pump, because that's what famous YouTubers do. And if you haven't had a chance to catch my parody video, I will put that linked at the end of this video, so you can take a look at it. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun making it. It was a one time for the holidays here in the United States. And so, yeah. Anyway, let's just bring on Tim. Let's get him to the stage. Let's share him. Let me make him bigger. He's got zero SEO score. So, um, you know, people aren't going to find this, thankfully. <laughs> Let me see what we got here. I'm not even on the screen. There I am. <laughs> All right, make sure I'm set up here. Okay, I'll make Tim big, me small. I think it's too much if I do that. Well, I don't know. No, because you can't. Well, we got Tim and then me at the gas station. I think that actually looks better. Some people like to get the full, full experience, though, uh, so that you can watch his content uh, through me rather than have to watch him and give him support. You can give me YouTube premium or AdSense or, you know, a cup of coffee because obviously links down below. 
<laughs> I have to tease on Tim a little bit. Okay. So, uh, he says, morning, you 90,000 beautiful souls from Laughlin, Nevada. Tim has just over 63,000 and he has actually gotten up to 63.4. So he has actually managed to get a few new subs, which I found interesting. <laughs> Maybe they like his uh, birthday suit content. Who knows? Maybe that just floats their boat. Um, so it's interesting, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And thanks to Tim, my channel has grown too. So thank you everybody who has subscribed. I do appreciate it. We're over, I think we're over 2,800 now, but I'm, you know, really in reality, I have hundred K. So YouTube just keeps unsubscribing people from my channel. All right. So it's a short video. He's put out a few more, but I just wanted to kind of break down kind of what he says in this, because it's very interesting and very revealing, uh, in my opinion. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Sarasota Tim, coming to you from the Tropicana. I went back in there to visit the office this morning. They had a little business to take care of uh, regarding some billing that was going on, and they were very nice in there. They took a very, uh, they took very good care of me. But how are you, nine? So if you remember yesterday or it was the day before something like that, I, my days get mixed up. I think it was potentially the day before that he had mentioned he had, I think when he was cooking his breakfast, that he had some unusual charges on his bills that he's been staying at this RV camp. And so I guess he had to go clarify that. Who knows <laughs> what that could be, but already he is starting out and just letting people know he's getting his bills sorted. You know, he's already out doing stuff. You know, this is the content that he does. He's just tells everybody everything. So, you know, 20 seconds in <laughs> and he'll, for the rest of his day, just, you know, spit out content where he chat, chat, chats away, um, to his audience. And, uh, it's not even long enough to make money. So I'm always curious when he pops out very short videos. Why even bother if you're monetized with something so short? You won't get any ad sense. So for somebody who's basically smart with YouTube, he's got no SEO score and he puts out very short videos and throughout the day, which over time could actually be for some of your subscribers more irritating than beneficial. It's like, Okay, you know, just compile the clips together for the day, but he doesn't do any editing. So it's very low, low level content. All right, keep going, Tim. I'm going to break it down what you say. Mm. 90,000 beautiful souls doing out there. I thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. All 100,000 of you. <laughs> now, we're not sure if. Him is trolling the community that comments about his uh, really low energy, low quality content. And uh, he is, you know, trying to put that spin on it. Like, because he knows he has 63.4 thousand. He's nowhere near 90,000. I know he claims all the time that YouTube is always dropping his subs. Uh, I've seen some weird things happen like that, but who knows? People could be unsubscribing. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't get that deep into it. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a tiny channel, so I really do notice if I, you know, get a sub loss, but my main job is not being a professional YouTuber, obviously. <laughs> Um, as we can see from the vlog I put out yesterday. Um, but I've kind of like, is this that, again, law of attraction, prosperity gospel, if I put it out there, then it's going to happen? Or is it that he is trolling the haters, as he calls us, and is just saying it to irritate people? Um, he's so far off on the number, it's kind of trolling, uh, in my opinion. So it could be a combination of all of those things, but he does do it knowing that he's causing uh, people to put comments, which they did down in his comment section, which is engagement for the video, that obviously he is incorrect, that he's very far from that number. 
but you know tim knows that that will get engagement and he's kind of you know playing on that also i'm thinking so there's a lot that he's doing in something that seems quite simple in my look at this. my opinion there's an in and out burger right here and uh last time i ate there i got a lot of comments about in and out of how i need to order my onions grilled and about some peppers and something about some kind of style what was that word that you guys talk about that you you order it uh i don't know some kind of style oh there it is Animal, yeah look i got people yelling at me out here in the parking lot saying animal style oh my god do i talk to that's it that's oh my god there's a guy 100 yards away and there's a lady over here telling me to get the animal style uh, peppers and uh uh the sauteed onion that is hilarious right there uh, yes because it is quite hilarious uh obviously he's always got a running nose and i find that interesting because the desert is actually supposed to be better for your allergies so do you have a deviated septum because that's what happened when i had my septal deviation prior to having it repaired now i feel much drier <laughs> and grateful i can breathe uh but that is interesting that he is able to be so loud. And this is coming from somebody who people say is loud. That's me. Uh, that they are able to hear him and his commentary. And obviously he's out. He's probably quite loud and he's walking around with a camera. I don't know if he's got any type of microphone uh, attached at all. So the mic is only what is on the uh, phone camera that he's potentially just using. I don't think he has any other type of camera other than his phone, uh, especially for what we could see when he panned around in his birthday suit and that reflective refrigerator of his. That was a lot of R's for me. Reflective refrigerator. <laughs> hey, I have a list. Don't get at me. Um, so yeah, I am um, not surprised that he was heard and that people started to shout at him because you know tim loves the attention he's definitely somebody who likes attention likes to seek attention enjoys the attention that he gets from youtube even if it's from haters um he definitely enjoys it he feels very special i think in my opinion um from the adulation he feels he gets from the notoriety from the feeling he is unique, special, uh, above everybody else, a little bit different. Um, there could be a lot of different types of personality styles that just in this simple interaction he is having with the individuals in the uh, car park in this time. Just in my thoughts, just kind of as an observation, speculation, um, but it is that kind of I am unique, I am special, um, I am to be admired, looked at, um, brought, I want to bring everyone around me, um, even strangers into my world, you know, it's very, uh, it's very, uh, to me, the ego is large potentially here. Okay, let's keep going, Tim. That was a very interesting, very interesting interaction. That's very telling. Very telling. Here. She's walking to her car. He's walking over here to the gas station at uh, Incredibles, and they can apparently hear me. I must be a loud talker. But anyway, yeah, I will be coming back. Oh, my good. Oh, he does have a microphone. Okay. Now I see the little microphone, the ones that are quite popular, little furry guys. Okay. And obviously, it's quite windy. He's got the wind passing across it. I mean, that happens. <laughs> He's outside, though. He probably knows it's windy. What will happen? Um, he's just outside a place that's closed and talking about it. So he's not even going into the in and out burger. That's interesting. He's talking about, he's just walking around a random parking lot, I guess, after having left his, um, complaints about the bill he received and he comes out and now he's like, well, you know, I'm walking outside. Um, I want to say good morning to everybody. Um, I want to stir up 
my haters and troll a little bit or say I've got all these subs and now I'm just filming content of me walking in a uh, car park filming about a closed restaurant around a parking, um, you know, around this gas station. So it's interesting that this is, you know, and then speaking so loudly that uh, people respond to him in the parking lot. All right, keep going, Tim. It's interesting. It's my stomach in the inlet, and I will absolutely be getting uh, uh, that order for you guys and make sure that uh, that we get it. Let me see if this is this nice lady right here. I can tell her to. I should have gave her a card. Uh, she's pulling out. But anyway. I'm guessing the cards are regarding his YouTube channel so that people can then subscribe and be able to, you know, say, hey, look, you know, I'm going to include you in this video. She comes subscribe to the channel, you know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's talking about wanting to go give her a card. Now, I will say in the interaction I have with the young lady at the uh, Panera Bread, after I went and pulled around, obviously, with the camera off, I did let her know that I was doing a video and, you know, I hope she was okay with me using the little bit just from the interaction at the intercom. And she said that was fine. I said, obviously it's not on camera, you know, details are going to be pretty much, you know, edited so that, you know, your, you know, uh, privacy would be kept. And she then asked me what was my channel so she could subscribe to it. So you know, I'm not running up to people trying to give them business cards. It seems like a very good marketing technique, but it also seems sometimes if your channel or your content is as low quality as Tim's, why would you be encouraging other than these types of interactions? Um, it's interesting, you know, it's very, um, you know, it's very, um, Tim <laughs> trying to get to a hundred K. Um, but yeah, so involving strangers into his content and then trying to get them to follow him. It's, it's interesting. Okay. Keep going, Tim. Everything in this very short video so far is very telling of your character. Uh, we're going to go over now to across the in street my opinion. to Aquarius. Uh, that's where Brock was staying. I think he might've checked out and he was talking about going to, um, uh, scottsdale or something he has a friend over there and uh so i am not quite sure how tim and brock connected but it seemed that yesterday evening tim and brock played golf together and they were filming each other i don't know if brock is somebody who also has a channel fill me in in the comments below i feel like tim asking for engagement but I know that they probably are not anything but um, sort of acquaintances rather than long-standing friends. Because if you hear the next part about how he explains um, Brock and how this gentleman is uh, now out of the area and visiting a friend in Scottsdale, Arizona, and kind of... <laughs> Just, just listen carefully. Um, and then it kind of tells you about the interaction that potentially they had in reality the evening before. It's it's an interesting thing to hear. It's very telling of Tim, too, in my opinion. Otherwise, if you haven't left, uh, he's got my number. I didn't get his. Uh, you can give me a call. If you want to play some golf, uh, just let me know. So why, if you were somebody and you guys got on would he not give you his number but you gave him his yours sorry that to me is quite interesting it says to me that brock does not want to hear from you and that if he wants to reach out it will be on his terms i think that that says that yeah i don't really care to to connect further but Tim doesn't seem to get this um, kind of signal from this other gentleman. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure how they met. Um, but that uh, says to me there were acquaintances. And this um, relationship does not wish to be continued on the other individual's side. Because they didn't give their number. 
You know, there's nothing, uh, you know, a lot of people, because they have cell phones, you don't have to answer. People can text people, you know, not, or not necessarily go. It's not like they're going to date. So, um, even though, you know, we know Tim's looking for a sweet little thing, but I found that very interesting that this gentleman did not, uh, give Tim the number in reciprocation. And we can go do that today, tomorrow, the next day. It doesn't matter. I'm a golf maniac. I've been watching some tutorials now. Um, there's a guy named Paul Wilson. I used to watch him all the time. And there's So is this a new arc for Tim? Because he has different content. The social security content is kind of drying up. Not quite getting the views. Probably a lot of them are hate views now. More than uh, views to listen to his advice. I think a lot of people have seen his shtick, as they call it, say here in the United States, and realized that he's no experience, no expertise, no idea what he is talking about in regards to Social Security, his mathematics. Sorry, I've got a little itch. <laughs> um, I had an infection in my nose. I apologize. Like Tim, I've always got stuff going on. No, not quite like Tim. Um, but he's not an expert in Social Security. He has a lot of bad advice. I think a lot of people have realized he's probably the person that inspired Dr. Ed Weir to come out of retirement and, you know, correct some of the misinformation that has been rounding social media perpetuated like tim and unfortunately the youtube algorithm which then fueled him with our money made from the viewers to continue to put out poor advice uh tell other people how to live and have actually no <laughs> assets or i mean he's not somebody that i personally would want to take financial advice from um, he's quite problematic in that respect. Uh, yeah, so he is, you know, <laughs> gonna keep on out here though. Keep making content, Tim, 15 videos a day. There's another guy that's an extremely, very good, uh, talented. Oh, yes, I was uh, gonna I say, from, um, his new arc. Yes, sorry, uh, golf. <laughs> <laughs> yes, after I ranted about his bad social security advice, he has these different orcs. He's got the devotional orc, the RV orc, the can't fix anything orc. <laughs> it's obviously his cooking, his coffee, his uh, repeated content. And now he's adding the golf to it. But he's like rolling around on golf courses alone. But he finally did get some uh, golf. It was like an hour. I mean, where do you think? It's like, it, Tim, you're reminding me, okay, of the people back in the day who used to get like their video, or their cameras, and they would go on holiday and they would just film everything about like what the family was doing on their vacation up in the mountains or whatever. And then the neighbors would go by and sit down and watch people's like holiday films. <laughs> but this is just online because it's like, you know, you're not a professional golfer who is giving tips on how to improve a swing or how to do a putt. I mean, people want to see like, Tiger Woods, or I don't know. Every golfer seems to be problematic at the moment. So I don't even know who to name. <laughs> oh my God. The one guy just broke up with the wife. The one guy ended up in like problems, like in some like road accident situation. I don't even know. But anyway, you're not on the PGA tour, <laughs> I think, or even a caddy for them. So I think you're sort of so to fall down the uh, golf, uh, sort of uh, ladder of experience and expertise that you're on the bottom rung, mate. And nobody is going to want to watch your hour-long golf video. Honestly, trying to, you know, make, I guess, the money back for the cost of the green fees you paid. Gosh, I hope not, people. Britain or one somewhere over the pond, and he's got all these techniques that uh, he talks about that I certainly want to try and, um, and do and improve my game. And a lot of these things that I had the knowledge two years ago when I played golf. I mean, look at Tim here, YouTube, Sarasota, Tim crush it. Oh, he's got all the little marketing things here. So he could try to get to that hundred K. That's very interesting. 
I mean, he's definitely a salesman. <laughs> or maybe he's trying to do this so the car becomes a tax write-off. I mean, he doesn't talk about his taxes often, but that's a way to say, this is a work vehicle. This advertises my business. And so I'm sure there's a certain amount with that business being a business vehicle. I wonder if he's uh, actually noting the mileage that he takes and then writes it off as a business expense. That'd be a lot of miles if he's driving back and forth from Florida to Laughlin, Nevada. That's interesting. You know, because I know when I had my own business as a nurse that people could hire and uh, I was trying to start a business, but the pandemic still so it was very difficult to meet people, which is kind of what you need to do. I had a nursing license plate and I had certain things and I obviously wrote those off of my taxes. I didn't have any other marketing on my call. Uh, I'm just kidding. Other than on the license plate, like the name of my business. Um, but I did do the mileage from my home to the location of where I worked, because obviously that would be included. I had like an app through QuickBooks that recorded it. And obviously I could write that off in my taxes for my business. And so I wonder if he's trying to do the same with just this. I mean, part of it is an ego fulfillment. Um, having his name, the YouTube channel, he talks about the viral video. Uh, but I do also wonder, is this a tax write-off? If he even does his taxes, <laughs> allegedly. A lot that I've forgotten, actually. Uh, you do forget things. And when I heard them on these tutorials, I was like, oh, that's what I was doing wrong. But then again, when you watch these things, a lot of times you go out there in the course and you try to change and you really mess yourself up. But I really believe that uh, I can improve my game, my game tremendously. And I, I mean, Tim, is this because you're trying to show that you're living your best life ever and you're just out playing golf? Um, it's not as if you've got a house <laughs> along a golf course at a country club <laughs> like I have with my friends <laughs> who are much younger than you, but both the husband and wife have good professional careers. Uh, so they live by golf courses. I live by a really nice park with mountain bike trails and dog walking paths and dog parks and other running trails and water and a uh, way to get to the beach <laughs> by bike. Not that close to the beach, but it's not that far riding your bike to the beach. Um, that's the main resort area here in Virginia Beach. So um where you know you're just uh, and your rv playing rounds of golf where you hope you get a discount because you're staying at the park it's very different from how other people do it mate <laughs> but see you see you're not living the full retirement you're not even living closely to the dream so you can you know try to pretend like you're the expert Obviously, the gentleman who's from the UK probably is a good golfer and has years of experience. That's and that's why you're watching it. But don't go out there and think you're going to compete with that. <sighs> Just very, very self. Look, he's making sure he's got this showing. Oh, Tim, Tim, Tim. Want to so badly because now that I've got these clubs that uh, Johnny Vegas was so kind to give me, um, I'm all about golf. Mm. I, I was a golf. Now, this is just a saying of mine. So not until somebody gifted him with some type of clubs was he going to get into this sport. I mean, I have clubs and shoes at the house that were not gifted. I purchased. I have one. I had some clubs that I happened to inherit from a deceased relative. Um, and I did take have a look at them because I was like, oh, they're such great clubs. And so I did take them to a cough store. And only one of them actually had any value, which was a putter. And I kept that one just because I actually did like the club. Um, I did take lessons. I used to play golf uh, way more frequently. I haven't in years. Um, I just haven't had the time. But maybe as I get older and I maybe I'll get back into it. My favorite golf course got closed down. So anyway, <laughs> not to get into it. Um, but uh, yeah, I ended up gifting those clubs just to some children because the clubs that were for my relative weren't worth anything. But I still have my own clubs 
which I realize are too short for me. <laughs> so, yeah. I bought the female, but like not the right length for my height. So they're not the best, but I can't somewhat play with them. I probably should trade them or sell them. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I ended up talking about my golf stuff. So now I feel like Tim. Uh, but I just, I guess I, my point was that when I started golf, I paid for like lessons, clubs, golf fees. I wasn't trying to look for a deal. I did get chances to play in golf tournaments that were for business purposes. So they would do like, you know, where you play best of four, you know, in a round with, uh, for like a business type tournament. And I did end up doing fours for golf for business purposes. So there is ways to actually work that prison job, uh, Tim, and you'll get free golf. And then at the end, because they're sponsored by all these different businesses, they have all these great prizes and they often have like food and drink and all this good stuff afterwards. And often you haven't had to pay a penny because maybe someone comped you that ticket, which is what I used to get a lot of because I was able to play golf and that's often for business purposes. So, and yeah, I didn't really pay much then. And I got prizes sometimes. So, you know, I don't know where your dream is. We have free clubs and your reduced rate golf fees. Green okay, fees. so don't get upset. But I used to call myself a golf whore because we played like every day in Sarasota. Every day, all day, more than one round. We'd, within one round, we just go around again. Uh, we were absolutely out there on that golf course. And then we would also... Well, then how did you work or take care of any business? When was this? I mean, that just sounds like so... <laughs> Unless you've got a lot of money and you're paying for the housekeeper and you, you can't afford to be that luxury out there. That sounds very indulgent to be able to have that much. I mean, who's taking care of your home or cleaning or... I mean, when was this? Is this when you initially retired? How did you have the money on seventeen hundred dollars a month on Social Security to be paying for that many green fees? I mean, just where did the cost for that come in? And now you say you did all that, and what happened to the clubs you were playing with then? If it was, it, I mean, if it wasn't because I thought you were in Boynton Beach. So how long were you in Sarasota? Because you, I understand you moved around, and you're originally from Alabama. So just, I don't know. I've had my clubs forever. Usually if you have a good set of clubs, you're probably going to keep hold of them for most of your life. Did you have to pawn your clubs? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know. Just, it's interesting. Because why wouldn't you have your own clubs? Why did someone have to gift you clubs? So go to the driving range uh, and hit bucket after bucket after bucket of balls. So, Yes. I, I love golf, and now that I've gotten back into it, I guess it's kind of like a crackhead. Once he tries it and quits it, or an alcoholic, and he, he takes another drink. I don't like all the language that you're choosing to use in your narrative to describe your playing of golf. It's language to do with, um, you know, um, you know, derogatory terms for women, and you've also used not to sound terrible, but I mean, this is just kind of how he's choosing his choosing his words, and uh, obviously um, about things with having had issues with alcohol. It's interesting the word you choose about being addicted, and now I think it's because he's going to try to force upon his audience. Um, his love of golf and like I said and then hopefully these videos will uh, pay for the green fees which I hope they won't oh, an hour of him on a golf course with somebody come on Tim are you rolling around in a golf cor cart he's right back in he's hooked again so I am hooked and I can't wait to get out there today and play some more so I'm either going to go back to El Rio or, or somewhere that was that $25 course uh, that starts at 11 a.m. It is currently uh, 9.40 uh, here in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. In uh, Laughlin, same thing. <laughs> and um, hit that links, man. But I'm going to get there a little bit earlier so I can get on that driving range and, uh, and hit some balls. I made bacon and eggs this morning. I didn't make morning chat. I've been on the phone. I've been doing some things. I was watching those golf tutorials. I'm a little behind. But this is for you guys. We're going to get out there today and crush it. Mm. 
Yeah, that's probably not going to be happening. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's whatever else he got up to. Let me see if he's got what videos he's brought up. Not that we're going to watch anymore, um, but just to see how many he's produced for the day. Um, and let me just get that. Let me share that instead. Yeah, we're at the gas pump because we're selfish like that. We're going to be here for 35 minutes, you see? We don't care. All right, let's see what he has going on. Okay. All right, let's see what Tim has got. So that was his morning. Um, and then he goes to the casino. So I guess he didn't get over to the golf course or... Uh, it just seems odd because I thought he was going to the golf course to start it, do the buckets. But it seems... Who knows if this is a time order, but he seems to do things in order. So why he ended up in the casino and then to the golf, and he just uploaded that. So that's interesting um, what happened between there and there. Maybe he did play golf and then did – I have no idea because we're not going to watch that. And now he says, I ain't going nowhere. It don't get any better than this. Break out the old Milwaukee. Is that a drink? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but is he not thinking to go back to Florida this time? And this is his new friend, Brock, over here, um, who did not exchange phone numbers with Tim. Um, his views, as we can see, you know, this 2.8. Um, he did get 3.7, surprisingly. <laughs> More on the grocery store than the golf. Oh, let's go outside the camper and take a look. Hasn't he showed this thing a thousand times? Do, do you show that constantly, Tim, the, the camper? Why show it again? Is it bragging? I don't know. <laughs> Who knows with Tim? I don't think I need to break that down any further. But I did see that, like I said, he's got more subs. So that is surprising. <laughs> Why would more people be wanting to subscribe to Tim? I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, if you did like this type of content and you got this far, leave me um, something indicative of a gas station. I don't know, a gas pump emoji. I don't know. Do they have a gas station emoji? Like a gas station pump? <laughs> uh, if they do, or a gas station attendant? Anything like that. A little a gas station attendant, a uh, little gas pump. Because we just don't mind spending 30 odd minutes hanging out there. Um, I will continue to kind of uh, consider uh, Mr. Tim's personality styles. Um, he is interesting. Like I said, there was a lot going on in a very short video. He does seem to be very, um, in the respect of my opinion only, kind of focused on him, himself. Uh, and I did find it interesting that that gentleman did not give Tim his phone number, meaning that he does not wish to have a continued relationship in my professional thought. Okay. All right, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know if you did want to leave me a coffee <laughs> instead of buying one for Tim, buy one for this grad student. I so do appreciate it. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.